Hello, my loves. How are you? How are you? So, you guys, I would like to read you a story. Okay, excuse me. I am still at work, so bear with me. I don't look at that either. I don't look at my snacks. My snack wrapper. I don't like that. It's Maybelline. No. I got a granola bar. <laughs> it's Maybelline. Okay, anyway. So this is basically regarding the PPP loans and some fraud that has occurred. Um, it does include my state, good old state of Ohio. Um, also Georgia, Michigan, and I'll let you guys know the other areas that um, the people involved are from. But uh, this is about five people who have been indicted um, in different types of fraud regarding PPP loan money that they have. They were um, loans that they were approved. And then it was come to find out investigating a lot of similarities and connections and, and the way that the money had been spent and dispersed um, kind of is what kind of tripped them up. So one thing I will say before I give you guys the details of what's going on is that, you know, the PPP loans, they're not even all dispersed yet. Actually, the majority of the money has not been spent. So for them to have already indicted people on fraud, it's maybe. Oh, <laughs> you know, is a good thing that they've already caught some people that have been fraudulent. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the details of what's going on and then give you my thoughts. Okay. So the headline is Ohio man, four others indicted for alleged $4 million PPP loan fraud. $4 million, y'all. All right. Um, and this is coming from Columbus, Ohio. Um, an Ohio man was among five people indicted by a Georgia grand jury for an alleged payroll protection program loan fraud case worth $4 million. Prosecutors in Georgia alleged that in April and May of 2020, Daryl Thomas, 34, of Duluth, uh, Georgia, Andre Lee Gaines, 66, of Dallas, Georgia, Khalil Green, Sr., 46, of Cleveland, Ohio, and Byrne Benoit, 44, of Burbank, California, allegedly submitted or assisted in the submission of fraudulent PPP loan applications on behalf of five businesses. The PPP loan, or the, I'm sorry, the PPP was enacted to provide emergency financial assistance to the business owners who are suffering the economic effects caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, said U.S. Attorney uh, Bijong J. Pak. Um, I tore that name up, I already know. The defendants allegedly took advantage of this critical financial assistance to fraudulently obtain funds that other small businesses desperately needed to keep their employees on payroll. Amen to that. It does give you the, um, so it does have the actual indictment um, charged. Um, admit or there we go yeah so it does actually attach the um the indictment here if you wanted to read through that the four are charged with conspiracy to commit bank fraud and wire fraud bank fraud wire fraud making false statements to a federally insured financial institution and money laundering a fifth individual carla jackson carla jackson 52 of tucker georgia is only charged with money laundering the alleged scam involved using the following corporation set up by the accused to apply for $800,000 $800, per company. Uh, Belater Front Group and Company, Daryl Thomas. Gaines Reservation and Travel LLC, Andre Lee Gaines. 
Impact Creations, LLC, Khalil Green, Sr., Transportation Management Services, Inc., uh, Byrne Benoit, Lee Operations, LLC, Daryl Thomas. Um, according to court documents, each business alleged reported that it had between 63 and 69 employees and approximately $319,000 to $332,000 in average monthly payroll expenses in their PPP loan application and for the most identical payroll taxes. Um, so it gave, it gives like the, their quarterly, um, it gives each business and it gives, you know, what they, their quarterly expenses. Um, all right. And it is very, very similar. Okay. Very similar. Four of the businesses also submitted with their applications, alleged allegedly fake bank statements that significantly inflated the funds in the businesses bank accounts investigators said two of the businesses did not open their bank accounts until after the time period reported on the fake bank statements after receiving the federal loans some of the companies paid millions to each other for payroll services and rental payments but the Department of Justice said none of the companies had any legitimate businesses, business transactions between them. Before federal agents caught on to the alleged fraud, Daryl Thomas used the PPP loans to purchase two luxury vehicles for more than $125,000 each, a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and a Land Rover Range Rover. So... You spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on two vehicles, and you're only getting like eight hundred thousand. Okay. Jackson used the money to she received in an illegitimate in an illegitimate transaction between her and one of the companies to make payments on two automobile loans. So she just used her money only to make payments on, not to own anything. Federal agents were able to recoup $3.1 million from 10 bank accounts out of the $4 million total. Agents seized Thomas Thomas's Land Rover. Hmm. Well, that's good. So out of $4 million that they received, um, $900,000 was gone, but they did recoup the rest. So that's good. Okay. Is that it? Let me see. Yep, that's it. So here's the thing. And so we have, I'm just going to say this. This is where I tell people about hitting licks, spending your, your time, your energy, your knowledge, experience, the good brain that God blessed you with. This is where I have an issue with people who choose to live off of fraud. You're always going to be looking for the next lick, always. Here we have five people splitting amongst themselves $4 million, A person chooses to spend a pretty large portion on two vehicles. Um, the other person, she used money to make payments on a vehicle, not to own anything, but to just make payments on. Um, all of this stuff is electronic. So there's a paper trail and it's able to be found. And when the federal government is involved, they can freeze whatever. You won't have access to anything. So not only, and I mean, it's a lot of money to withdraw. You know, it's not just $100. <laughs> okay. So it's a lot of money to withdraw the cash. But I'm just saying, you know, out of $4 million, they were able to recoup 
$3.1 million plus one of the vehicles. So my thing with that is people aren't very smart. <laughs> you know, you you spend your time putting together this plan to commit fraud, um, but you don't have any plan afterwards on how to be successful. And I'm not saying that, you know, be I'm not giving the message to be a good criminal. But what I am saying is that, you know, um, just like if you were to hit the lottery, instead of flying through the money, use that money to figure out a way to make more money. Um, you know, you would have been better off investing or, you know, uh, putting it in property or doing anything outside of buying vehicles and, you know, food and withdrawing cash and, you know, they probably went shopping and, and all that sort of thing, you know, um, you're never going to have good luck hitting licks on people, businesses, systems. It's not going to work out. Okay. It's not. Um, I have lived a portion of my life trying to make it you know, duping the system or figuring out ways to get a, around stuff, loopholes and all that kind of shit. And eventually you are going to have to pay up. So the best thing would be for you to just make the right decisions and use that knowledge and energy and know how that you have um, on a legit, something legit. You know, they obviously created these businesses and, you know, why not make the business legit? Why not put the actual work in? Um, so anyway, so I just really, uh, yeah, I, I just really can't respect it. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I don't want to make this too long and keep dragging on and repeating myself, but I just wanted to read that story to you guys. You know, there's a lot of small businesses out here that really do need the assistance. You know, there are businesses that have already closed because of the pandemic. There are people who already lost a lot, you know, lost everything um, trying to keep their business open. And it still didn't. It still wasn't successful. Not only did the government take forever and a day to approve this money and to get it out, but it's being given and being, you know, these loopholes are being um, being, uh, you know, where people are finding these loopholes and they are able to dupe the system and we find things like this, you know, so, you know, they were able to seize that money. Is that money going to go right back in the pot, you know, for it to be given to someone else who actually needs it? Like what's going to happen, you know, but it's dumb shit like this that happens that, um, slows up the good people and the people who are actually out there working and have legitimate businesses and really do need the help. So, you know, just do the right thing. You guys just do the right thing. You don't want to be in jail for fraud, um, not having anything to show for anything, um, all because you're trying to make a quick dollar. Okay. So anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I haven't posted on this channel in a while, but I am so glad to see everyone that is over here. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please let me know if there are videos, if there are stories. If you like videos like this where we're just sharing some, you know, current news, um, things that are going on in the world, you know, just let me know. If there's something else you would like to see on this channel, let me know that as well. Other than that, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.